everybody, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to create something joyful. Today, I'm going to show you all of my best tips and tricks for making awesome t-shirts with Cricut iron-on vinyl using a regular household iron you probably already have at home. That's right, no special heat press or easy press is needed. I started making shirts with an iron myself and I did just fine until I got a heat press. And you can do just as well with your iron too. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make a simple multicolor vinyl design and how to apply fun options like foil and glitter iron on vinyl. So come with me to the craft table and we'll get started. I know for a fact that many people buy a Cricut cutting machine just so they can make personalized t-shirts just like these. And I get it, I love designing iron-on vinyl designs and cutting them out on my Cricut. Seriously, I could create a whole wardrobe of custom t-shirts. They're just so much fun. And they make wonderful gifts too. But you may be new to all of this vinyl transfer t-shirt thing, and that's totally okay. This tutorial is for you. While there are tools like heat presses and the Cricut Easy Press out there that make this process pretty easy, yes, today I wanna show you how to get great results from your regular household iron, which most of us have. <laughs> and it's perfect if you're on a budget because you probably already have an iron. Now there's a bunch of things that you need to know before you make a shirt. You need to remember to mirror or flip the design. You need to put the vinyl on your cutting mat with the right side up. You need to weed the right part of the design. You should preheat your shirt first, set your temperature to the right temperature, press long enough and remove the carrier sheet all at the right time. <laughs> and since we're using an iron, there are things like remembering to keep the steam off and making sure that each area of the vinyl gets pressed evenly. That's a lot of stuff, I know. The good news is I'll be right here with you while you make your shirt to make sure you get it done right. Do not be intimidated, you can totally do this. So to make sure that we're, we've got our heat and our time settings right, we are going to test our iron-on materials on our t-shirt first. This will prevent us from potentially ruining an entire shirt if we happen to get the settings wrong on our first try, because that's pretty common, actually. <laughs> so to create our custom t-shirts, we're going to be using Cricut brand iron-on vinyl, which you may also hear referred to as heat transfer vinyl or HTV. There are so many vinyl brands available and each one is a little different. So for this tutorial, we're just gonna focus on the Cricut brand of iron-on vinyl. I like it and I use it for most of my iron-on projects. You can use the others too, of course, but this is readily available. Now, iron-on vinyl is a special type of vinyl that has a heat-activated adhesive on one side that adheres to fabric and other surfaces. It comes in tons of different colors, and the best part is you can cut it out on your Cricut cutting machine. It's my favorite part about creating customized t-shirts. It's so easy to cut and apply too, really. So what will you need for this project? Well, first, you need a shirt. <laughs> I use these 100% cotton t-shirts from Amazon, but you can use shirts made from polyester as well or a cotton poly blend. I pre-washed my shirts because that's what Cricut recommends that, that we do for the best results, but you don't really have to pre-wash it if you don't have to, in my opinion. It's totally up to you. Next, you also need some iron-on vinyl. For this tutorial, I will show you how to use Cricut Everyday Iron-on Vinyl just like this. This is the most versatile iron-on vinyl and it can be applied to tons of different materials. It is the easiest to work with. You can get everyday iron-on vinyl in standard rolls like this, as well as what's called smart iron-on vinyl, which looks like this. The big difference between these two is that the standard iron-on vinyl needs to be cut on a machine mat, whereas the smart iron-on vinyl does not need a machine mat if you have a compatible machine like a Cricut Maker 3, Explore 3, or Joy. To keep this tutorial today simple, I'll be demonstrating with the standard iron-on vinyl because that's what every machine can cut. If you got the smart iron-on 
but you don't have a compatible machine, don't worry. You can still put it on a machine mat, just like standard iron-on vinyl, so it's okay. I'll also show you how to apply foil iron-on vinyl because I love that it adds a bold, shiny flash to your design. And last but not least, we're going to do glitter iron-on vinyl because who doesn't love a little sparkle? These are the colors I'm using, but you can choose any colors you like to complement your t-shirt. Next, you need a way to cut your vinyl. I'm using the Cricut Maker 3, but you can use any Maker or Explorer for this project. A Cricut Joy is also an option. Now, if you're using standard Cricut iron-on vinyl, like I am today, you'll also want a green machine mat or a blue light grip machine mat. If you're using Smart Iron-On with a Cricut Maker 3, Explorer 3, or Joy, you won't need a machine mat at all. <laughs> now, as far as tools go, you'll want a brayer, a pair of scissors, a spatula, a weeding tool, and a lint roller. And of course, you also need an iron. Any regular household iron will do. Just check that it has a cotton linen setting. It does not need to have a steam feature. We don't need that. You also don't even want it. You wanna be sure the steam is turned off when you use your iron with vinyl. You also need a solid ironing surface like a countertop, a sturdy table. You can also use something like a pressing mat or a folded up towel. Just don't use an ironing board. It's not stable enough for the amount of pressure that we need to apply when you're ironing on your decal. I also recommend using your pressing mat or folded, folded towel on a countertop or sturdy table. Uh, now you'll also want a timer. You can just use your phone or a kitchen timer. Anything will work like that. And you're gonna to wanna to have some parchment paper on hand to protect your iron. And of course, as I mentioned, a lint roller to remove debris and excess lint from your shirt before you apply your vinyl. Be sure to use parchment paper, not wax paper, not freezer paper. <laughs> if you don't have parchment paper, you can also use uncoated butcher paper or a Teflon sheet. And one more thing, you need a design for your shirt. There are tons of amazing designs on Cricut Design Space. But today, I will show you how to apply this super cute, do what brings you joy design. It's available for free in my library so everyone can access it. So are you ready to get started? Me too. Let's get our design. Step one, get a t-shirt design. If you already have a design you want to use, skip to step two. If you don't have one, I have a free one. To download my free t-shirt design, go to jennifermaker.com slash 475 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. And then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the designs on the page by searching for number 475 and then click it to download the zip file. In the folder, you'll find SVG files. If you have a Joy, upload this file. If you have a Maker or Explorer, use this file. I'm going to cut this design on my Cricut Maker 3 today, so I'll upload this one. Once uploaded, add the design to your canvas in Cricut Design Space. If you're not sure how to do this, go to jennifermaker.com slash svgs to learn how to unzip and upload files to Cricut Design Space. Step two, prepare your design. Here's what our t-shirt design looks like in Cricut Design Space. See the small heart that's away from the design? This heart is for testing your iron-on settings later. So click the ungroup icon right here to work with it separately. And let's move it out of the way for now. Now you might be wondering, how will this design look on my t-shirt? I'm going to help you figure that out. On the left side of your canvas, click on the templates icon right here. Choose classic t-shirts. If you don't see it on your screen, search for classic t-shirts in the search bar. Then pick the style, size, and even the color of your shirt. Don't worry, the template is just for planning and visualizing, and it won't be part of the final project. I'm making a white shirt, so I'll change my shirt template color to white. The template will also help you size your design correctly, but more on that later. 
This design is split into two layers, so you can change the colors. I'm going to use Cricut Iron-On Foil Vinyl in red for the word joy, and Cricut Everyday Iron-On in Cornflower Blue for the rest. I think those will look really cute on my white t-shirt. So to begin, select a layer and change the color by clicking the color box next to operation and choose a selection. Do this for both layers if you like. When you're all done, select your entire design without the heart and click group. I'm gonna change the width of this design to eight inches in the size box up here at the top. The size of your design is completely up to you, of course, but you don't want it so big that it's hard to read or too small that people are squinting at your chest either. I have helpful charts for maximum design sizes for shirts available over at jennifermaker.com slash t-shirt ruler guide. One more thing, since I'm going to use two kinds of vinyl, I need a second heart for testing. If you need a second one as well, just select the heart, click the duplicate icon to make a copy. Then use the color box to make them each match one of your layers. Now it's really ready to go. If you'd like to make your t-shirt with just one vinyl color, simply select both layers and change your color. Then select both layers, but not the heart, and click attach so they print on one sheet of the same colored vinyl. But as we're making the two color design today, we can click undo until we've got our design back to blue and red. Now we're ready to cut. Step three, cut and weed your t-shirt design. Make sure the correct machine is selected and then click make it. On the prepare screen, keep the material size at its default. And still on the prepare screen, make sure the correct design pieces are all on the right mats if you're cutting them out of the same material. If you see a mistake, click cancel to go back and fix it. Now this is a really important step. Make sure to toggle mirror on for every mat. That way the designs will face the right direction when you flip them over and iron them on your t-shirt. Remember, Always mirror your iron-on vinyl designs. Now click back on the first mat and then click continue. On the make screen, adjust your settings for your materials. I'm cutting the blue parts of my design in Cricut Everyday Iron-on Vinyl, so I'll select the Everyday Iron-on base material. Also, I set the pressure to more. I like to do this to ensure a really clean cut. If you're cutting Cricut's foil heat transfer vinyl, use the foil iron-on setting with more pressure. Or if you're using glitter heat transfer vinyl, choose glitter iron-on also with more pressure. The key is to match up your vinyl to your setting. Now let's get ready to cut our vinyl. Be sure to place your first color of iron-on vinyl shiny side down on your green machine mat. The shiny side is your carrier sheet, and the side that you want face up is the actual vinyl. If you have any trouble telling the difference between the sides of your vinyl, check out my guide on how to find the cut side of iron-on vinyl over at jennifermaker.com slash vinyl side. Use your brayer to adhere the vinyl really well to your machine mat. This will help it cut better. Make sure your fine point blade is clean and in your clamp. Load the mat into your machine and press the load button. Then press the flashing button to begin cutting. When the cut is complete, unload the mat and flip the mat over onto your work surface and gently roll the mat away from the vinyl to release it without any wrinkling. If you're unhappy with the way your cuts look, be sure to check out my Cricut tips and tricks for cleaner cuts at jennifermaker.com slash blades. If you're making a shirt with a two-tone design, repeat the steps for your next mat, being sure to select the right material and cut settings before you cut it. Now it's time to weed your vinyl. I'll start with the Cricut Everyday Vinyl. Weeding means removing the bits and pieces of extra vinyl from around and within a cut design. Basically, all the parts that aren't going on your shirt you want to remove. 
First, use your scissors or a craft knife to cut around the design. Cut out the small test heart individually since it will be placed in a different location on the shirt when we test it. Using the point of a weeding tool, pull up a corner of the extra iron-on vinyl that you want to remove. Very carefully peel away the extra background vinyl, also referred to as the negative space. We don't want to include this part in our finished design. Don't forget the middle parts of the letters too. Also, make sure you don't pull up any pieces that you want to keep. If they do come up, because that happens from time to time, gently pat them back in place and try again. It's okay to go slow. Take your time. Now, it's important for you to know that the foil iron-on vinyl is much more fragile and less flexible than the everyday vinyl, which makes it harder to weed. Again, just take your time. Make sure to remove any stray bits of vinyl from the carrier sheet after weeding as they can accidentally get transferred to your shirt and we don't want that. Once you're all done weeding, the design will look backward since it was mirrored when it was cut, but don't panic. This is what you want it to look like. When you flip it over to the shiny side, you can see it the way it will appear on your shirt. I always recommend you do this, you know, flip it over and look at it, as this is how you're going to notice that you forgot to weed something out. <laughs> now vertically crease your design at the center. We will use this line later for perfect positioning on the shirt. Step four, iron on your design. Now we're ready to iron. But before we do the main design, I really like to do a test before I make a mistake on a shirt. We'll use the small heart test piece to confirm that we have the right time and heat settings for our iron. Now most heat transfer vinyls work best with a cotton linen setting on your iron. But for foil vinyl, be sure to use the wool setting. If you're using an iron with a steam feature, be sure to keep the steam turned off. Steam will mess with the adhesive on your vinyl, making it not adhere properly to your shirt, or maybe not adhere at all. You don't want that. While your iron is heating up, get your pressing area ready. A pressing mat is helpful because it protects your surface from the heat of the iron. If you don't have a pressing mat, you can use a towel that is folded into fours. If you don't have that either, you could even just use a wooden cutting board. That's all I used in the beginning. Just make sure to use wood, not plastic. From now on, I'll just call this the pressing area. Let's do the test. Lay your shirt face up flat on the pressing area. Now you can lint roll the front of your shirt to remove any dust or dirt or pet hair. I highly recommend this. I'll test the Cricut Everyday Iron-On Vinyl first. Pick a spot for your test. The bottom corner works really well. Double check that the steam setting on your iron is turned off. And preheat the shirt for 15 seconds to remove any moisture. If you have a red shirt, don't be alarmed if it changes color. That's normal and it will change back when it cools. Now place the test heart shiny side up on the bottom corner of your shirt or wherever you're going to put it. Place it about an inch from the hem if you're putting it in the bottom corner. Lay some parchment paper over the heart to protect your iron. Now take your kitchen timer or just use the timer on your cell phone and set it to 25 seconds. This is how long you're going to press your vinyl. Now take your preheated iron. Apply medium pressure onto the heart and start your timer. Your pressure should be firm, but not too hard. As you're pressing, be careful not to touch the metal part of the iron. Keep your iron in place without moving it around. Do not move your iron back and forth as if you were trying to iron clothing. When the pressing is all done, flip the shirt over. Replace your parchment paper, set your timer, and apply heat for another 25 seconds to the back. And then wait a little while the shirt and carrier are cool to the touch. Then slowly pull the carrier sheet up and sideways. 
Sometimes the carrier shirt needs a little more time to cool or needs some more heat applied to get it to lift without trouble. The carrier sheet should come off easily when the right amount of time is used and heat is applied. If any design areas begin to lift, simply put the carrier sheet back in place, lay the parchment paper on top, and apply the iron again for a few seconds. Never put the hot metal on uncovered vinyl or you will decorate your iron by accident. Ask me how I know about this. <laughs> So take notes on your test results if you find that you need to adjust the time or pressure to get the best result with your iron. For example, when I tested the foil vinyl, 25 seconds on both sides was enough to get the design to stick to the shirt, but it was kind of rippled when I removed the carrier sheet. But it looked much better when I put the parchment paper on top and pressed it for a few extra seconds. The glitter vinyl heart also applied successfully using 25 seconds on the front and 25 seconds on the back. Your results may be different and that's okay. That's why we did this test. Now that we know what heat and time settings work for our shirt and our iron, we're ready to iron on our super cute main design. If you're making the two-tone design like I am, we will press the top words and the flourishes first. My top section is Cricut Everyday Iron-On Vinyl, so I'll set that to the cotton linen setting on my iron. Again, be sure that the steam setting is turned off. To find the center of your shirt, fold it in half by matching up your sleeves and the sides. Use your iron at your selected setting and press the crease in the area where your vinyl will be placed. This removes moisture from the fabric and adds a little center crease for alignment. Place the shirt face up on your pressing area. I'm using one of my DIY t-shirt rulers for perfect placement here. They come in really handy when figuring out where to place your design so it's not awkwardly high or awkwardly low on your shirt. You can find them totally free at jennifermaker.com slash t-shirt ruler guide. Line up the top edge on the collar with the central line on the crease. Place the first design on the shirt shiny side up so you can read it correctly through the carrier sheet. See, that's why we mirrored it. <laughs> the top of the design should be right around the bottom edge of the t-shirt ruler. Place some parchment paper over your design to protect your iron. Once the iron is at the right temperature, set your timer to 25 seconds and apply medium pressure. Pressing down over the entire front of the design without moving it around. Now if the design is larger than your iron, you can press it in sections, but make sure to apply heat to each section for 25 seconds so your design fully adheres to your shirt. Apply pressure straight down and keep the iron still while pressing. It's okay to take your time with this. Try not to overlap your iron sections too much, but it's really important that every part of your design gets a full 25 seconds of pressing for the best results. Flip the shirt over and apply pressure with the iron for an additional 25 seconds. If the design has smaller or more intricate designs, an extra five seconds of heat on the edges can help prevent them from peeling in the future. Wait until the shirt and carrier sheet are cool to the touch and then slowly pull the carrier sheet up and sideways. Remember, if you have trouble with this, put the carrier sheet back down and press it for a bit longer. Now for the second layer. Place it face down in the right position. Reference your design in Cricut Design Space if you need any help placing it in the right spot. If part of your carrier sheet covers the existing design, the edge can leave an indent on your first layer of vinyl. I recommend trimming your design so there's no overlap. Remember to set your iron to the correct setting for your material. Since this layer that I'm doing here is foil iron on vinyl, I'll set my iron to wool and press for 25 seconds on the front and the back. Remember, if you're using foil iron on vinyl, it's rippled after the carrier sheet comes up. Put some parchment paper on top and apply a few seconds of extra heat. This helps to smooth out the foil.
The glitter iron on vinyl goes on very similarly to the other two, except glitter iron on vinyl is kind of rigid and requires some extra attention to your edges as you're ironing. Place some parchment paper over your design. With your iron set to cotton linen, apply medium pressure and hold and press over the design for 25 seconds. Remember to keep the steam setting turned off. I pressed it in sections, making sure each area got the full time. Apply an extra five seconds of heat on the edges to prevent peeling. Flip the shirt over and apply pressure with the iron for an additional 25 seconds. Wait until the shirt and carrier sheet have cooled a bit and then slowly pull the carrier sheet up and sideways. If any areas begin to lift, put the plastic back down and apply the iron again for five seconds. And voila! Step four, show it off. And you're done. It's time to show off your iron-on vinyl t-shirt. These are so fun and satisfying to make. And once you make one, you'll want to make them for all of your family and friends too. Honestly, they'll probably just ask you to do it once they see yours. Iron on vinyl t-shirts are one of my favorite projects. The first time I made a vinyl design t-shirt, I suddenly wanted to make all the shirts. The first one was for Alexa for school. The second one's for Greg for a gaming convention. And now that you know how easy it is to apply vinyl with a household iron, you can make them for fun, for gifts, or build a whole wardrobe of cute custom shirts. You can even take what you've learned and start making your own personalized tote bags, aprons, hoodies. There are really so many possibilities here. Now let's talk about how to care for your vinyl iron-on t-shirt. You should wait 24 hours after ironing on your vinyl to wash it to give it time to cure. And I highly recommend you turn your shirt inside out before you wash it. Tumble dry on low heat and never use bleach on your vinyl decal t-shirts. If you follow these directions, your shirt design should last at least 50 washes, probably more. Now, if you have any questions about how to iron on your heat transfer vinyl or anything else craft related that you think I can help you with, please let me know. I love to help. Just leave your question below this video or better yet, come ask in our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters and post your finished t-shirts too. I love to see them. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.